In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Bruce died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Bruce, also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. 
Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely and mercy follow me all the days of my life i will dwell in the house of my god forevermore shepherd me O god beyond my wants beyond my fears from death to The second reading is from Corinthians, a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we all will be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. Then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, 
Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. We are here to bid a solemn and prayerful farewell to our brother in faith, our friend, our father, our grandfather, and our great grandfather, Bruce Fox, whom God has called it himself from this mortal life. My sincere condolences to his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and all family members. And I'm told that almost all of them are here. Thank you for being here to honor your father. We thank God for the many blessings that God bestowed upon Bruce during his life. The gift of a good wife and a faithful wife, Mary Ann, to whom he was married for 57 years, the gift of the four children, all here present, thank you. The gift of the 12 grandchildren and 11 great grandchildren. The gift of success in business, and I was told that his business partner is here. Thank you for being here. But above all, the gift of life and longevity. I was told that he died at the age of 91. This is also a gift. Not everyone can be blessed with this kind of longevity. These gifts were and are the signs of God's goodness to him, and we prayerfully hope that God will crown these gifts by granting him eternal life in heaven. Bruce Fox grew up in Connecticut with his sister and his brother, and he met Mary Ann at a school dance at Trinity College. In the early 60s, Bruce and Mary Ann spent four years, four happy years, in Honolulu with their young family. And Bruce traveled the world managing international division of hearts. For over 50 years, uh, Bruce lived in Arizona, raising his four children. I'm glad that he saw the importance of getting involved in raising his own children and not just leaving this responsibility to his wife. Research has it that fathers who actively were actively involved in raising their children, like helping care for them, playing with them, teaching them, offering emotional support, tend to experience less conflict with their wives. <laughs> this is research, they are not my own words. <laughs> so I believe uh, the family of Bruce was a happy one. <laughs> there was no conflict. And this not only benefits children, it strengthens marital relationship and also it has long-term benefits for children. Research also shows that children who have the fathers who are affectionate are more sociable and well-liked throughout early childhood and adulthood and have better cognitive skills as compared to children who would not have secure attachment to their fathers. So Bruce's children owe the greatest deal to their father for being affectionate to them throughout their childhood. I believe you are the benefits of uh, the beneficiaries of all these, you know, uh, good qualities because of the good care you got from your father. Furthermore, Bruce served as a member of the parish council at St. Maria Goretti 
and also helped with emergence outreach at St. Patrick's. He volunteered his time and talents to keep the activities and ministries of the church going. He was a gift to the church. We thank him. So, my dear brothers and sisters, when we recall these accomplishments of Bruce, we should be able to feel proud of him and not let our hearts be troubled as the gospel that I just proclaimed taught us. Let us not be overwhelmed by grief following the loss of our beloved father. Instead, let us have faith that God will also look at Bruce's good deeds and reward him by admitting him admitting him at his right hand in heaven. May the Lord Jesus, who destroyed death by his own death and resurrection, hold him by the hand and lead him to the company of angels and saints where we all hope to meet and enjoy the vision of God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With the confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Bruce, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he be now admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives, especially Marianne Fox, Sister Helen Clancy, Smokey Fox, Rose and Francis Fox, and Michael Wynn. May they have the reward of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially the Kelly family, Zach, Jen, Akira, may they heal through God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the love of Grandpa Bruce that he showed us during his life, may he know the perfection of fulfillment of that love in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the doctors, nurses, and nursing assistants who are caregivers for the sick and the dying, may they have the energy they need each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the family and friends of Bruce that who, who seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness of doubt that comes from grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those special intentions we hold in the privacy of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our grandparents who influenced us as a family in so many ways, may we keep alive the value they instilled in us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May the memory of Bruce inspire us <laughs> by a renewed love for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, God, hear our prayer. Our oh, merciful God, we ask you to hear these prayers and accept them and grant them according to your holy will and admit to our beloved 
Bruce Fox into your eternal kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Bruce, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the satanic of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for you are faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without the end, we hear claim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and the filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity a pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Eduardo, his assistant Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Bruce, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, 
we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the word all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As the Savior is commanded and found by the divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. At this moment, uh, Catholics and only baptized, baptized Catholics who have received uh, the First Holy Communion previously, properly disposed and not conscious of any grave sin, are invited to receive the Most Holy Communion. Canon Law Numbers 912 through 918 enjoin priests on occasions like this to remind the faithful that 
it is their individual responsibility to refrain from sacrilegious reception of the most holy communion. Thank you for your kind understanding.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that your servant Bruce, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go to the concluding rites, I'd like once again to thank you all uh, for gathering here uh, to be the solemn and prayerful farewell to our beloved uh, Bruce. I just want to thank you especially for participating actively at uh, this liturgy and for solemnizing it so well. Thank you for taking the readings, I mean the sounds. We did that, thank you. And thank you, uh, grandchildren, for doing uh, the prayers of the faith so well. It was wonderful, emotional, prayerful, and fantastic. Thank you all. I see the names who are here. Perhaps you, you forgive my pro poor pronunciation. Alicia, Katie, Susie, Catherine, uh, Stephanie, Ariana, Steve, Anastasia, John. Oh, I don't have the full list, but I just want to recognize you all. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for bringing the, the offerings in the procession, the sons, I think it was Bill, Liz, Greg, Mike, and yes. Thank you all, it was wonderful. And I believe uh, Bruce is very happy when he's looking down from wherever he is, he's very comforted and happy as he makes his final steps uh, to meet his merciful and loving uh, God before he joins the choirs of angels and saints in heaven. Thank you, let us continue to pray for him. God bless you all. My dear brothers and sisters, trusting in God, we have prayed together for Bruce, and now we come to the last farewell. There is always sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Bruce again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. It's
To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Bruce in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bruce in this life. There are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Bruce and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Bruce forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Bruce to his place of rest. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 